Keep it going for Josh Nelson! Let's get started. How are we doing, everybody? All right. I'm, uh, uh, you guys are great, man. I'm excited. I, uh, I'm an uncle. Love being an uncle. I'm a great uncle. I got a t-shirt that says Uncle of the Year. I bought it, but whatever. I got a lot of nephews and nieces. I'm going to talk about some of them. The only one I'm not going to talk about, he's one. He doesn't do anything, so he's boring. But I got a bunch of them. I have a favorite. I know you're not supposed to have a favorite. It's going to get me in trouble when they watch this. But I don't care, he's five years old. His name's Baby James. This is why he's my favorite. He just got bunk beds. Decided to call me and let me know. <laughs> FaceTime me. He's like, Uncle Josh, I just got bunk beds. I'm like, nice, dude. He's showing me the FaceTime. He's like, here they are. I go, pretty cool, dude. I remember when I got bunk beds. He's like, if you ever want to come over and spend the night, you can. That's what I said. That's what I said. Then he followed up with, but if you do, you have to sleep on the bottom bunk because you're too fat, you'll break the top bunk. <laughs> And I was like, what? I go, who told you that? Your mom tell you that? Did your dad tell you that? And he goes, no, Uncle Josh, I can just see you. <laughs> Kid's a G, man. He's a G. He, uh, he knows I do comedy, so he likes to tell me jokes. One day he, uh, he goes, Uncle Josh, I got a joke for you. I was like, all right, this will be good. I go, what is it, buddy? He goes, what did the ghost say when he came to your comedy show? I'm like, I know what it is. I go, what did he say? He said, you stink. Give me my money back. <laughs> and now I'm arguing. I'm like, he didn't say that. He just said, boo, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Who's telling you your jokes? What are you doing? <laughs> it's great. There's a bunch of them. Uh, the other nephew, he's three. His name's Jackson. He just learned words and sentences. And he came in one day and he goes, Uncle, Uncle Gosh. I was like, well, it's Josh, dummy, but that's all right. <laughs> he goes, Uncle Gosh. I go, what's up, dude? He goes, do you want to see my pee-pee? I was like, nah, man, I'm good. He goes, come outside and see my pee-pee. I'm like, no, man, I want to be the cool uncle, not the creepy uncle. Like, I'm good, dude. And then my brother looks at me, he goes, just go outside and see it, dude, don't be weird. <laughs> what? He goes, go outside, it's not what you think. I go, all right. So I go outside. My nephew points uh, not to his pee-pee, he points in the backyard where they built a teepee for him. But the kid is too dumb to say T's, so he calls it his pee-pee. I look at my brother, I go, you guys gotta get this figured out, man. He's like, what's the big deal? I go, he can't be at school telling his teachers that his uncle was playing with his pee-pee in the backyard. Like, that's not... I'm gonna be in jail, bro. Figure it out. Kid's great, man. One day he walked into his mom, I'm sitting there, and he goes, can I have some fucking water? And I was like, this is gonna be good. And then she just goes, say please. And then he politely goes, can I please have some fucking water? I was like, this is insane. I go, he can cuss if he's just polite? She goes, no, he can't pronounce sparkling. He calls it fucking water. I was like, this kid is special, man. <laughs> But let's get some fucking water and go to the pee-pee right now. Let's do this. <laughs> I, uh, my other nephew, his name's Logan. He's 10. When he was six, one day we were watching football. He walks in all serious. He goes, Uncle Josh. I go, what's up, dude? He goes, can I tell you something and you won't tell dad? And in my head, I'm like, oh, no, this is serious. I go, buddy, you can tell me anything, anytime. What's up? And he looks at me all serious. He goes, I know a bad word that starts with D. So I look around, my brother's not there. I go, what is it, buddy? And he looks all serious and he goes, fuck. <laughs> and then he just took off running. You know how confusing that is? Especially when you're on edibles. I was so, I was like, did that just happen? I think it did. I reacted the same way you guys did. I just started busting up laughing. Probably not the right reaction as an uncle. Should have been a little more composed. But now he's gonna think it's funny, he's probably gonna do it to other people and I should feel bad, but I also feel like other people deserve that treat in their life also. <laughs>
I struggled with it for a little bit. I was like, should I tell my brother what happened? I was like, ah, I don't know if I should, because I don't want to betray his trust. Like, he asked me not to. But then I was like, my brother also probably should know his kid's a dumb shit. Like, he should probably know what he's dealing with. That doesn't start with F either at all. <laughs> I love watching my nephews. I love watching it. My brother will have me watch them, but I'm always like the last call to watch them. And I know I'm the last call because this is how it goes. My brother will be like, hey, can you watch the kids? And I'm like, uh, yeah, when? He's like, in an hour. I'm like, oh, you went through everybody else and finally got to me, your last hope. I was like, yeah, I'll watch them. I love watching them. But they get nervous. They get nervous when I watch them. It's because one time something happened. I watched uh, the five-year-old James when he was about two years old. And I said, my only rule is he's gotta be potty trained. They're like, of course he's potty trained. So we're watching him, he comes in, baby James comes in. He goes, Uncle Josh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I go, perfect, you know where it's at. <laughs> he goes to the bathroom and then about 10 minutes later, I hear, Uncle Josh. I go, what's up, dude? He goes, I need some help. <laughs> oh, what help do you need? I walk in, he goes, I need my butt wiped. <laughs> And I was like, man, that is not in my jurisdiction. Like, bro. I was like, what do I do? So I did the only thing that I could think of. I, I threw him in the pool. Like, that was... That was what I did. I got a call from my brother. I got a call from my brother. He's like, did you throw my kid in the pool? I was like, yeah, how did you think his butt was going to get wiped? I'm not doing that. You said he was potty trained. You lied. You didn't... Potty trained means plus wiping. What are we doing? <laughs> Last time I watched them, they'll call like every hour on the hour because they're nervous because of that incident. They'll call me every hour on the hour. They'll be like, how are the kids? I'm like, they're fine. Like if one of them dies, you're gonna hear from me first. Like, that's not gonna be a phone call I don't make. Like you're gonna hear from it. Last time I was watching him, he called me. He's like, what are you guys doing? I go, well, the one-year-old's sleeping. The three-year-old and the five-year-old and I, we're watching dominoes fall on YouTube. We've been watching it for two hours. He goes, they're into that? I go, they love it. He goes, you're into it? I go, yeah, I took an edible about two hours ago. <laughs> and it's amazing. And he goes, wait, you took an edible to watch my kids? I was like, yeah, how did you think I was gonna get through this? You just thought I was gonna do it on my own? No way. He goes, I can't believe you did that. I go, remember, I'm your last call. You went through everybody else. Like, you get what you get, dude. Plus, just to let you know, you can build so many Lego cities on edibles. Like, so many. The kids are like, can we stop? I'm like, we haven't finished the village yet. Get back to work. Get back to work. We gotta finish this. I love it. There's a lot of parents in here tonight, and I respect, I respect you parents. Because you guys have unconditional love. You love your kids 24 hours a day. And I respect that. Because my love for my nephew starts after 11 a.m. Like anything, they, they'll be like, hey, we got a soccer game. I'm like, what time is it? They're like, eight. I'm like, nope, sorry. <laughs> Call me when they get better and they play after 11. Like that's, <laughs> that's the rule. When they're older, they play later. Like that's what's up. <laughs> and it sounds bad, but it's not my fault. It's because I got burnt once. I got burnt once. I went to uh, a t-ball game of my nephew, Logan, when he was four years old. I went to his t-ball game and uh, I woke up at 7 a.m. I got my coffee. His game started at eight. And then this little mofo refused to play. And by refused to play, I mean he threw his glove over the fence, he sat in the outfield. And then, and I was like, all right, well maybe he'll bat. And he's like, I'm not batting. He refused to do all of it. So I just basically went and I was like, all right, whatever. Maybe next week. So I went like four weeks in a row and he never played. And I was like, all right. And you're like, why would you go four weeks in a row? Because my brother was his coach and I just got to heckle him the whole time. Get your kid in the game, what are you doing? Be a better coach. My brother's like, please don't come back to any more games. I'm like, don't worry, I'm not ever again. Until they get better. Uh, wine drunk, where's my wine drinkers at? Wine drinkers, yeah? I love drinking wine, man. I love drinking red wine. It's a fun drunk, it's a good mood drunk. You can drink a whole bottle, no one judges you. Try that with vodka. Drink a bottle of vodka, your friends will be at your house. Like, hey man, we gotta talk. <laughs> Drink a bottle of wine, they're just like, what year was that? Was it a good year? You're like, yeah, it was 2008. It was a fantastic vintage. It was great. I drank it all by myself, nice. 
Like, you'll never be out with your buddies, and all of a sudden your buddy Steve is ready to fight somebody, and you go, what's up with Steve? And they go, I think he had too much Merlot. <laughs> what, yeah, he was crushing the charcuterie plate, slamming Merlot. Now he's ready to fight. Like, that's not a sentence you're gonna hear. Tequila, that's the stuff, man. That's the stuff that'll make you fight. Yeah, yeah. Ladies love tequila till the end of the night. It's always the best. I love tequila, I'm drunk. I don't get tequila. Like, tequila makes no sense to me. It's the only thing, you'll take a shot, your face will have a stroke. And then you're like, that was a great idea. We should do that all night long till we don't remember anything. We should do that for sure till we don't know if we're in a cop car or a cab. That sounds perfect. <laughs> Great, man. I feel old this last month. I feel old. I'm in my 40s, which I know isn't old, but I made this pur purchase recently. I purchased a pill sorter. <laughs> That's about the saddest, oldest purchase you can make. Like, as soon as I hit send, I got a little sad. Because it's not for fun pills. You know, it's not like I'm doing ecstasy on Tuesday, <laughs> mushrooms on Wednesday, Xanax on Thursday. If I was, then you'd be like, let's hurry up and get this pill sorter here. I gotta figure this out. <laughs> what day are we on? We're on mushroom day. Let's party. <laughs> I also feel old because I yelled at some kids for skateboarding in my driveway a couple weeks ago. <laughs> of a place I rent. I don't even own it. <laughs> because they were making too much noise. I was like, hey kids, get your skateboards, get out of my driveway. They looked at me, they said, screw you, old man. They flipped me off. They were like 20 also, they weren't even that young. I couldn't catch them, kids are fast on skateboards. Pull the hamstring, I'm like, ah, oh, you guys won this round, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I also feel old because like four of my friends got colonoscopies this month. And uh, I hang out with people my age, not like old people. So I was like, oh no, this is where we're at. That's, that's not fun. I recently had this where I was older than my doctor for the first time. Don't know if you've had that happen, but that's a sad time. Cause you're like, oh man, I'm on the other side of things. Cause it wasn't like Doogie Hauser. It wasn't like this dude skipped all the school. Like this was just a normal dude that was my doctor now. I don't like having a young doctor. I want an old doctor who's seen some things. Right, you want a guy who's been like, oh yeah, that's, I see alcoholics, I know what's up. Not a young doctor. His young doctor tried to give me advice. He's like, hey man, maybe you should drink a little less. I was like, maybe you should get off TikTok, bro. I'm not taking my medical advice from someone who's on TikTok, dude. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. <laughs> That's my audience, not a TikTok audience. That's great. <laughs> I'm at this age, I don't know if you guys are there yet, uh, but I get hurt more sleeping than I do awake. I can hear by your reaction, you're there. You're like, what did I do last night? Why does my neck hurt? Oh, that's right, I just slept. I did what I had to do for eight hours. My pillow was too thick. <laughs> I'm that guy who goes on a road trip, I have to take my own pillow. You know these psychos? There's a bunch of you here tonight. I know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to let you know, everybody's making fun of you when you're at the airport and you're dragging your suitcase with your pillow on top. Like, it's embarrassing. But I don't care, I gotta do it. Because if the hotel pillows are too thick, it'll wreck me for two weeks. One time the pillows were too thick, I had to sleep on a hoodie for like all night. And I was like, I'll never do that again. Never again. I got hurt sleeping recently. I did, I don't know if this happened to you recently, but I woke up, I was like, where am I? I'm like, oh, I'm just upside down in my own bed. I don't know if you've done that since you were six years old. You know how terrifying that is? You're like, what, did I get kidnapped? Nope, I just, what was I doing while I was sleeping? I went to the doctor, because I had a pinched nerve. I go, I got a pinched nerve. He goes, how'd you hurt it? Did you hurt it lifting weights? I was like, oh, no, not really, dude. Appreciate your confidence in me, but no. I think I just heard it sleeping. And he goes like, on a couch? I know. He goes, on a plane? I go, no, I just my bed. And he goes, yeah, man, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, well, let me guess, do you sleep on your side? I go, yeah. He goes, you're too old for that. I was like, I don't think that's very professional for you to roast me as my doctor. 
He goes, no, what happens if you sleep on your side, you'll throw your hips all out of whack, you'll get lower back pain, and you'll get headaches. Listen how quiet I got, you all just learned some stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Welcome to my sleeping TED Talk, saving one back at a time. <laughs> Somebody just hit their purse, like, wait, that's true, yeah, that's true. So I look, I'm like, all right, well then how am I supposed to sleep if I'm not supposed to sleep on my side? He goes, you're just supposed to lay straight on your back and move as little as possible. So I'm just getting ready for my coffin already. That's what we're doing, 44 years old. Plus, I don't know if you've ever walked in on somebody sleeping straight on their back and moving as little as possible, but they look like a serial killer. Some of you are with those people, like sleep with one eye open. It's terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I found out recently I was too old for Las Vegas. I know. All right, let me, all right, let me straighten this out. First of all, I'm not too old for Las Vegas, but if I could do Las Vegas in like six hours and then leave, it would be perfect. Because I'm a dumb dude and I'm not responsible. Like, I don't, I don't know what a marathon is when I'm drinking. It's like sprint. And then it's like, oh God, what are we doing? And that's the way I am in Vegas. So if I could be in and out. And this is when I found out I was too old. This is what my old moment. We were at the, uh, my buddy won a bunch of money on a football game. And he goes, hey man, you want to go to the nightclub? I was like, can I wear sweats? <laughs> he goes, no, dude, you can't wear sweats. You won't get in. I was like, yeah, that's kind of the point. <laughs> but this was my moment that I found out. We were at the nightclub and the waitress comes over and she's like, sir, can I get you anything? I was like, is there any way you can get the DJ to turn the music down? <laughs> She goes, no. I go, well, can you at least turn the bass down? It is so loud. Like, what are we doing? We're just trying to have a conversation here. Like, hit the treble button. What's going on? And she goes, no, sir. But what I can do is I can bring you earplugs. And that's what age I am. I bought earplugs at a nightclub in Las Vegas. Yeah. Yep. And just to let you know, they're $48. They uh she came, she came back with the receipt. I was like, is this for all the drinks? She's like, no, those are just the earplugs. I was like, $48, all right. Well, I'm getting my money's worth. I wear them all the time. <laughs> that Vegas trip, I did something I'm uh, pretty proud of. I'll probably do for the rest of my life. You're gonna hear it tonight, and then you'll probably start doing it. But uh, I went over to security. I go, hey, will you come kick me out in like 20 minutes? Some of you are on board. Some of you not yet. And he goes, why? I go, because it's 2 a.m., I'm drunk, it's a bachelor party, I wanna go home, but my friends won't let me leave, they keep calling me a bitch for trying to leave. <laughs> and he laughs, he goes, all right, and he comes over 20 minutes later, and he gets on my face, he's like, hey bro, you gotta go. <laughs> and all my friends like gathered around, they're like, what did he do? I was like, yeah, what did I do? He goes, you know what you did? And I was like, all right, I guess I gotta go. And I left. <laughs> all my friends are like, what did you do? I was like, I don't know, this guy's just a dick. I don't know why he's kicking me out. I'm texting him all night, like, I'll meet you at the next bar. I'm just laying in bed in sweats. <laughs> and here's the best part. This is the, the absolute best part, is you don't have to pay for the tab when you leave like that. Yeah. All my friends are like, you owe us money. I go, I got kicked out pretty early. I think I'm good. Pretty early. I think we're good. My favorite part is you can do it anywhere. You don't just have to do it in Las Vegas. I went to Ikea like three months ago with a girl. I was like, you got to get me out of this, man. Come pick me out. Say I stole something. Get me out of here and the relationship. Let's do this. You can do it at your nephew's baseball game, too. <laughs> Pay the um 20 bucks, throw you out real early. Like, I have endless examples. I could keep going forever. <laughs> uh, that Vegas trip, I, uh, I took a private jet home for the first time. I know as I said that, that sounds kind of douchey. But hear me out. Like, it wasn't my private jet. Like, my buddy won a bunch of money, and he goes, hey, man, you want to take a jet home? I was like, yeah, sure. He goes, just cancel your flight. I go, no problem, I'm on Spirit Airlines. I have no problem. 
canceling my $49 flight to go on a private jet. And I don't know if you guys have ever rented a private jet, but I have, like I said, and... Um... <laughs> the best, if you've never rented, the best part is you don't go through TSA, you just go, you drive through the gate, you get on the plane. That's pretty cool. The part that I didn't think that was that cool is, uh, I didn't know this, is not all jets are big. I've been watching rap videos and I thought all private jets were big and that's not true. Like, my buddy, uh, he, didn't have pri he didn't have rap video money. He just had regular jet money. So we, so we get on this jet and it's, it's, all right, let's be honest. It's like a six seater. It it's, looks more like a plane, but it was a jet. And we get on this thing and I'm sitting there and my head is touching the roof. And then I could touch my buddy there. I could touch my buddy there. I could touch my buddy there. And I realized what that was for. That was for when the plane took off and started going like this. That was so we could all pray together that we would make it. And the whole time I'm on this jet, I was like, God, I just wish I was on Spirit Airlines. I really wish I would have taken Spirit Airlines. Which is never a good situation. You never want to wish you're on Spirit Airlines ever. By the way, side note, I think Spirit Airlines is so cheap that if the air things came down, they'd make you run your credit card for the air. I don't... I don't think they're my sponsor. I think it's fine. <laughs> and then here's, here was the worst part about the private jet. And uh, so we landed not downtown where I live. We landed at Palmar Airport Road in Carlsbad, which is about 50 minutes away from where I live. And like, I look at my buddy, I go, hey man, how am I getting home? And he goes, dude, figure it out, I got you here. I was like, well, I didn't know we were gonna land here. Like, that might have that kind of changed some things. I probably, I probably wouldn't have gotten on it. So I had to get an Uber. And it was 5 p.m., it was surging, and my Uber was $108 to get home. So I was like, man, I just, I $108 Uber instead of a $49 flight. Like, what am I doing? I was like, I don't need your private jet, never again. Never again. I love it because uh, I'm in my 40s, which I, I talk about being old, but it's, I know it's not old. It's still a great age. It's, I, I know I'm not the age where it's like uh, fall asleep in public old. I know that. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna get there, but I'm not there yet. I was at the DMV not too long ago. There was this dude just sleeping for two hours the whole time. And I was like, I can't wait for that. Like I, he didn't even need a pillow. I was like, I'm jealous, bro. I'm also not the age where I tell random people facts age. I recently had a habit where this lady came up to me and she goes, just to let you know, there's six butterfly over there. She was in her seventies. I was like, all right. I don't know what to do with that information, but all right. And then she obviously thought I was very into it because she goes, and to let you know that when butterfly mate, they fly together forever. Very sweet, right? And I was like, oh, that's very sweet. I still don't know what to do with any of this information. But she got me because then I had to do a deep dive on butterflies. And I Googled him, I did about an hour of research. And just to let you know, she's lied. She made all that up. That's not even true. And I was like, that's only something you can do in your 70s. She made it up. She's like, I did this when encyclopedias were around. You can't check me on it. That's ridiculous. We have Google now, lady. But I thought about it, like, that's such a, like, a, a rant. Like, you can only do that if you're a lady in your 70s. Like, if I walked up to you tomorrow, bro, and I was like, just to let you know, dude, there's six butterfly over there. You'd be like, what are you on? Mushrooms, get out of here. I don't care. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm in my 40s. I think I'm killing it. I live in San Diego. Uh, I only have two other dude roommates, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's a big deal in San Diego. A lot of you live with like five people. And uh, maybe not this group, but a lot of people live with five like it's a cast of real world. I moved past that. <laughs> I also think I'm killing it because I have my own Netflix, which is a big deal. I got my own Netflix. People have to share mine, which is great. That's a lot of power. I can change my password whenever I want. If I don't want my brother to watch something, it's a lot of power. 
I brag about having my own Netflix, but it wasn't always the case. It wasn't. I used this girl that I didn't know for like four years. Four years ago, I put out on Facebook, hey, does anybody have Netflix? I wanna watch Ozark season one. My buddy hits me back. He goes, hey man, use this girls. I go, who's the girl? He goes, it's my ex-girlfriend. She'll never know. And it worked. It worked for four years. Until recently, I went to watch Ozark season three or four, whichever one's out now. And uh, Netflix said that she needed to update her credit card. Yeah, she didn't pay our frickin' bill, you guys. I had a call her, I was like, hey man, you gotta pay our bill, what are you doing? I told my buddy, go call your girl, like let her know. He's like, we don't talk anymore, we can't. So I got my own. Think I'm killing it, I got matching towels, pretty big deal in my life, matching towels, yep. I didn't even know matching towels were a thing until I went over to this girl's house one time and she's like, don't touch the matching towels. I was like, they make two of the same? That's amazing. <laughs> I also, uh, but then you get a little humble sometimes because I'm like, I think I'm killing it, but I only own one lamp in my house. And what happens is I'll be watching TV with the lamp and then when I want to go to bed, I have to take the lamp, I unplug it, and then I take it with me to my bedroom. I didn't even think, and I've lived there six months. Like, it's not like I just moved in. I didn't even think it was a big deal until one day my roommate's like, hey man, I gotta use the lamp tomorrow. I was like, bro, we need another lamp, man. This girl one time, she's over at the house, she's like, hey, uh, why do you only have one lamp? I try to be slick, I'm like, cause I'm saving the earth one light bulb at a time. She goes, it just looks like you're poor. I was like, ah, oh, whatever, perception, it's fine. <laughs> I hate it though, I live with dude roommates. Dude roommates are the worst, man, they're gross. I wanna live with women roommates, like maybe like a wife one day, that'll be great. <laughs> dude roommates are the worst. Like I live with two dude roommates and there's just always hair in the sink and both of them are bald. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where's this coming from? Women's showers are way better. I don't, like, every time you go to a woman's shower, she has options. You're like, do I want to leave with a coconut hair or do I want to leave with strawberry hair? It's got lotion, all kinds of stuff. It's got like four loofahs. Not dude roommates. Go to any dude right now. He's got three for one head and shoulders. That's it. <laughs> Women are way better. They're cleaner. They're way cleaner, they're better, they're sweeter. That's right. Y'all you are, are sweeter, like, uh, like you plan better. Dudes, we don't plan, like she just said, that's true. Yeah, that's like, dudes, we don't plan very well. The only thing we plan are bachelor parties and fantasy football drafts, that's it. Not you ladies, you plan things and you show up because you're considerate. Like if it's your friend's Jenny's birthday in three months and 25 of you RSVP on Facebook, all 25 of you will be at that birthday party. Not dudes. If it's my buddy Steve's 50th birthday next week and I go out drinking Friday, I'm not gonna be at his birthday on Saturday. I'm like, I don't care, dude. I'll get you when you're 60, bro. I don't. He's like, I don't think anybody's coming anyway. Like none of my dude friends are coming. You ladies are sweet. Like this is a sign that shows you how sweet you ladies are. This girl walked up to me and she goes, Josh, close your eyes. And I did, cause I trust you ladies. I knew her, so it's not that weird. She goes, close your eyes, and I did. And then she reached over and she grabbed an eyelash off my face. And then she goes, make a wish. And I did, and I blew the eyelash and it was freaking magical, you guys. My wish was to never go hiking again. That was my wish. Here's another story that shows you how sweet you ladies are. Maybe crazy in this one, maybe sweet, you could be the judge. My friend Stephanie said she went out to her car at 6 a.m. and she had a note and a cupcake from her friend Jill before work. I said, why? She said, for no reason. I said, what the note said? She said, have a great day at work, love ya. I was like, that's insane. And a lot of you ladies are like, no, that's normal. That's just sweet. And then I was like, we can't do that as dudes. Think about it. If I go out tomorrow morning 
and I have a note and a cupcake at 6 a.m. for my buddy Brian. I'll be like, I think Brian wants to sleep with me. I'm pretty sure. Either that or he did something to the cupcake and he's trying to murder me. Either way, I don't know. <laughs> Girl Scouts are back selling cookies again. Girl Scouts, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Saleswomen of America, gotta respect their game. Every time I went to Vaughn's, I go to Vaughn's and my goal is I, I, I don't want to buy any cookies, so I just don't make eye contact. That's my strategy. And I tried to do it recently, and I walked by her, and this girl was good. She jumped in front of me. She goes, do you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? I was like, no, I'm good. She's like, are you sure? Do you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? I'm like, no, I'm going to diet. And she goes, when do you start? And I was like, you little bitch. But I didn't say that. That's what I thought. I was like, that's pretty good. I go, let me get two boxes of Thin Mints. I, uh, I like to meet your sales trainer. That was a very good technique. Nicely done. Fat shaming for the win. Nice technique. Nicely done. I went to Havasu this summer. Had a good time. I love Havasu. It's fun. It's a fun party. Yeah, if you've been there, you know. I went there this year, and it was, we were partying on, the, on the, the beach, and some girl yells, show me your tits. And I looked around. I was like, yeah, I want to see some tits. Where are the tits at? And then she goes, no, you, sir. And I was like, that's so mean, but I didn't want to be rude. So I showed her. She threw me some beads. She goes, nice bee cups. I go, thank you, I work hard. <laughs> They're natural, I appreciate it. <laughs> that was the second sign I needed to lose weight. The third sign that I needed to lose weight is I went to the doctor and my doctor still has one of the slide scales, you know, this ancient piece of machinery. Like everything else is uh, updated and current, but not this piece of machinery. And this is what happened. Uh, I, got, I had a nurse, she, she's a bitch. I know you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> I know that doesn't go together, but hear me out. This is what happens. I got on the scale and she immediately slid it to the end. That's 350. Like we, like, we don't do that. We all know what we do. We start low and we work up. We get to my weight. We go, yeah, I get it. I need to lose some. I'm not happy about it either. And then that's where we get. But not her. Dolores went all the way to the end. And then the worst part was Dolores was at 350 and then she went down 325. She was like surprised I made it. I was like, what? She went to 300, still surprised. I was like, do you have money with the nether nurses? What is going on? So mean. So that was a good sign. I go, I need to lose some weight. Looked into a couple different options. I was like, maybe I'll try yoga. Then I realized I'm terrible at stretching, not fun. And I go, all right, what other? I'll go, I get a Fitbit. I got a Fitbit. And then the, it, the, the battery died after two weeks. I go, I guess that workout's done. <laughs> so my buddy, he's a personal trainer. He goes, why don't you hire me? I go, oh, that's a good idea. He goes, what are your fitness goals? I go, honestly, just to have my belt not point towards the ground. Like, that's a good, it's <laughs> a pretty good fitness goal. And he goes, all right. And it was working out, except for he was just, he was too much. One day he called me. He's like, let's go work out. I go, I'm not home from work yet. He goes, yeah, you are. I'm looking at you through your window. Like, I can see you. I was like, I think I hired an ex-girlfriend. Like, what is going on? But that wasn't the reason like, the, he was bad because we would be at the gym and he was just so mean. He would yell at me. He'd be like, do another one. I'm like, I can't. He's like, do another one, pussy. I'm like, I can't. He goes, that's why your last girlfriend left you. I was like, I told you that in confidence, Connor. Not for you to shout out at our 24-hour fitness, bro. <laughs> Where are the happy couples at? Make some noise. Happy couples? Make some noise. Happy couples? Yeah. I love asking it like that because uh, there's like one or two dudes in here that didn't make noise. And uh, it's going to be an awkward car ride home for them. The girl's just staring at them right now. Why don't you clap, Steve? What, are you not happy? He's like, no, babe, I swear I'm super happy. I just wasn't paying attention. Be really happy to have this conversation on the car ride home. Can't wait. Fantastic. Let's see if I can get some of you in trouble. So there's like 25, 30 couples in here. Make some noise if you believe in soulmates. Make some noise if you believe in soulmates. Couple golf claps. One guy really aggressive over here. The rest of y'all are like, no, nah, man, I'm just with her. This is not my soulmate. We settled, bro. Leave us alone. Move on. Some of you are just doing seasonal relationships. You're like, COVID lasted too long. 
It's fine. I guess I'm a romantic. I believe in soulmates. I believe there's one perfect person out there for me. I believe there's one perfect person out there for me. I just think they died already. <laughs> or they live in North Korea and they can't get out. And that's just a numbers game. We just assume they're in the States. That's not fair. I was really high on edibles one night and I was like, I wonder if my soulmate was a Jehovah Witness and I just didn't answer the door. <laughs> Which is terrible though, because now I answer the door for everybody. Dobo rings, I'm like, I got it. It's like, oh, it's just Carl the mailman again. He comes around here a lot though. Comes around here a lot. Now, d dating in your 40s is hard. Like, the worst part about dating in your 40s is everyone's just so old. The best part about dating in your 40s is your eyesight's not as good. That's the best part. <laughs> Dating's different now because of social media. You don't meet people in the wild anymore. You're like, what do I do? Do I slide into her DMs? Do I comment on her pictures? I like her outfit. Do I send fire? Do I send emojis? Is hearts creepy? I don't know. Do I send praying hands? That seems, that seems non-threatening. I figured out the rules though. The rules are, uh, you can send whatever you want if you're hot. That's the rule. If you, like my really good friend, he'll slide in their DMs, he's just like, I'll eat your ass. And they're like, dude, he's so brave. He's so, I can't believe you reached out to me. He's so brave. <laughs> so brave. We also find out too much information because of social media about people before we go out with them. Like you'll meet a girl and you'll start looking at her, you turn into a detective, you look at her Instagram, you're like, oh, there's been no dudes in for like the last year. I mean, she probably went through a bad breakup, she scrubbed her Instagram. Or there's a lot of dudes, you're like, I don't know. I was gonna, I was gonna go out with this girl and then I looked at her Instagram and she had so many hiking pictures. Like so, so many. And I was just like, we're gonna hike every day? Like every, like put a couple bar ones in there. What are we doing? She also had a bunch of sunrises. She's, and she had a quote. She's like, gotta love a good sunrise. I was like, no, you don't. Unless you happen to do drugs and happen to see one. You don't have to love a good sunrise at all. <laughs> Dating, man. Dating. The worst part about dating is parking. <laughs> it is. It's the worst. You like, you like take a girl out. You look. She's got heels on. You're like, ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> Gotta park close now. Maybe I'll valet. Oh, that's thirty bucks. Don't know if she's worth it. Don't know if she's worth it yet. And the worst part is you'll like drive looking for parking and you're just steaming inside. Like you're, but you have to look normal to her. You can't just lose it because she's right there. She, you look like a psycho. So you're like, all right, I'm gonna find parking. We're gonna find parking. You go around the block a couple times. And if you were by yourself doing this, I would just go home. Like I wouldn't, like if I circle the block two times, no parking, I'm going home. I'm like, God doesn't want me out here. What am I doing? Last time I went out with this girl, we did that. We circled a couple times. I just picked a new restaurant. I go, we're going to a new restaurant. We get there, she's like, do you have a reservation? I was like, no, you have no idea what I've been through. The lady's like, you don't have a reservation? I was like, you don't have any idea what I've been through. We're not, we're not gonna do this. I miss the dating times when you just used to dance behind them. You're like, like eighth grade, you just dance behind them. You're like, oh, she touched my leg, we're together. We're together, we're together forever. <laughs> I've been single for a long time. I've been single like so long that I'm starting to think it's because I didn't forward that chain letter to 40 of my friends. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to hear an AOL joke, did you? <laughs> AOL joke. <laughs> In your 40s though, it's, you start like, like lowering your standards a little bit. You get a little desperate. Like I recently signed up for a beach cleanup. I was like, that's gotta be a great way to meet girls. Great way to meet girls. Beach cleanup, right? And like an hour into it, I'm picking up trash. I'm like, this isn't worth it. I'd rather be single for the rest of my life. Not worth it. 
I have. I've lowered my standards a little bit. I've lowered them. And this is what I mean by that. About a month ago, I was driving on a date to Temecula. And I was like, oh, this is rock bottom. <laughs> and it's not, it's not just because of people from Temecula. That's part of it. <laughs> but I'm driving an hour on a date, and it gives you a lot of time to think. You're like, I don't know if this is worth it. I've never met it. This is a long time. And then I just started thinking, what is 10 years from now going to be? I'll be like, you know, maybe Barstow is still close enough. As long as it's not Victorville, that place is the worst. I have, I've, I've lowered my standards, and this is what I mean by that. Like in my 20s, I go, I'm gonna marry a girl, she's gonna be hot, she's gonna be blonde, she's gotta be from San Diego, she can't smoke cigarettes, she's gotta be independent. No one. And in my 30s, I write, I got, okay, I'm gonna marry a girl, She's gotta be from San Diego, and she can't smoke cigarettes. Still no one. And then my 40s, now I'm just like, I just wanna marry a girl. That's it. Just make it a girl. I have a feeling 50, I'll be like, you know, maybe a dude is fine. As long as it started as a girl, I guess. <laughs> I love that joke. Topical and progressive. I've had some weird interactions with ladies lately. I recently had this happen. I did a set at the comedy store. This girl walked up, she's very pretty. She goes, you were very funny. I go, thank you. I go, you want to get drinks? She goes, you weren't that funny. I was like, oh, that's mean. And then she goes, how old are you? I was like, ah, well, I identify as a 30-year-old. She goes, no, really, how old are you? I go, well, that's kind of a gross question, but all right, I'm 44. And she goes, oh, bummer. I was like, that's mean. She goes, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. I wanted to hook you up with my mom, but you're too young. I was like, you're being so nice, but also so mean at the same time. Had some weird dates lately. I went on a date with this girl from Tinder. We matched. I knew we would because her profile said, you can't pick your father, but you can pick your daddy. Some of you go, oh, wow. I go, yeah, swipe right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> And we were going out, we were having a good time. We were at dinner and uh, hanging out. And then she goes, let's go back to your place. I go, I had a feeling you were gonna say that based on your profile. We go back to my place, we start making out, everything's going good. And then she looks at me, she goes, I want you to fuck me four times tonight. And I was like, I think you have the wrong guy. <laughs> what? Four times, what? Maybe this month, what, what? What are we doing? That's insane, ladies. Four times? Like, ladies, go for one, pray for two. What are we doing? That's insane. I tell you this part of the story because it's important, not because I'm bragging. It's important for this part of the story. But we ended up having sex. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are cheering like it's the only time ever. He goes, yeah, we're so happy for you. We ended up having sex, and on the very first time we had sex, I ended up getting a cramp in my hamstring. And my legs started kicking like this, like out of control. And she goes, what is that? I was like, honestly, this is just survival. She's like, what? I go, yeah, I didn't stretch or drink Gatorade. If I would've known we were gonna do this, I would've had a banana for sure. <laughs> And just to let you know, like, I got a cramp and I was on my back. I wasn't even doing any of the work. <laughs> you know how humiliating that is? You're laying on your back and you just, your leg, your body just gives up on you. Like that's, your body's like, we're done. We're done doing this. We're done doing this. That's not the, the worst date I ever went on. Uh, worst, here's the worst date. We were, we were out to dinner. She goes, what do you do for a living? I tell her what I do. I go, what do you do for a living? She goes, I'm a parking attendant. I went, nope, absolutely not. There's no way I can do this. Waitress comes over, I go, can I get the check? Grab the check, walked it out, put it on her window. I don't care, I love that joke. Screw that girl, screw her. That's the only time, that's the only time you can be mean to a girl. Like any other time, you guys would be like, no way, but everybody hates parking attendants. So you're like, yeah, we get it, we get it. 
What I'm trying to say is let's defund the parking police. That's what I'm trying to say. If you don't take anything away from tonight but that, that's, what, that's the whole message. Even cops are like, yeah, we don't need them. I don't know what we're doing. I went through a breakup like four years ago, but I'm fine now. I'm fine. I'm fine. I am, I'm fine. It's great. Uh, we had to break up. We fought a lot, and she just didn't like me. This is when I knew we had to break up. One night, we were laying in bed, and she goes, are you going to do that all night long? And I go, what? She goes, I can hear you breathing. And I was like, I hope I'm going to do that all night long. If not, that means you murdered me. We had to break up. But in my last relationship, that's when I learned that you ladies are way better at ending fights. You guys will hold on to some information and then you'll use it. And those guys are like, what just happened? I have no idea what happened. And this was the day that I learned it. My ex and I, we were arguing over what the dog should watch on television when we're not home. <laughs> Easy 30 minute argument, of course. She's like, yeah, the dog likes to watch stuff with animals. I'm like, no, he doesn't. He's a big dog. He likes sports. He probably has money on the game. What are we even doing? And this is the moment that I learned that you ladies are way better at ending fights. In the middle of this argument, she looked at me. She goes, you know what, Josh? You don't even have eyebrows. And I don't like how some of you just laugh because you just noticed that for the first time. <laughs> she won the fight so good, I stopped mid-fight. I went straight to the bathroom. I went to look. And I was like, oh, my God, she's right. I don't have eyebrows. What? That's how I found out. That's a terrible way to find out. <laughs> and ladies, don't come up to me after the show and be like, just to let you know, you can draw them on or micro-thread them or micro-blade them. I've done my homework. I know my options. <laughs> Girls like to come up and point like, they're not that bad. You're like, that's not what I'm going for. That's not what I'm going for. I thought about it. I'm pretty sure I had a full set of eyebrows going into the relationship. <laughs> I've seen pictures. So I started to wonder if every time she got mad at me, I'd pass out. She'd come and pluck two of three eyebrows. She's like, it was the greatest revenge ever. She's like, got no eyebrows, bitch, I got you. She's like, you'll date no one after me. And she's right, she won that round. She won that round. We had, uh, we had some interesting conversations. We had some good conversations in the couple years we dated. One of the conversations we had one night was pretty heavy, though. She looks at me, she goes, I think I'm going to die at a young age. I was like, oh, my God, don't say that. Like, why would you say that? She goes, no, I think I'm going to die of cancer at a young age. I'm like, don't put that in the atmosphere. Why would you do that? And I wanted to console her. Like, I wanted to be nice. So I was like, you're not going to die of cancer. Cancer only takes the good ones. You're going to be fine. <laughs> And she laughed. She thought it was funny. We both laughed. We thought it was hilarious. We broke up. A year later, she calls me. She, you remember that conversation we had? I go, yeah. She goes, you're never going to believe, but I have cancer. And I was like, oh, my God, I felt so bad. I go, I'm praying for you, just to let you know. And then a year after that, she called me back. She goes, just to let you know, I beat it. I'm in complete remission. I was like, I'm so happy for you. And like I said, I knew you were going to beat it. Because cancer only takes the good ones. I knew you were going to be fine the whole time. <laughs> I love that joke because it's like a roller coaster for you guys. You're like, I don't know if I like it, but that's my favorite. I love that joke. As you could probably look at me, you're probably like, oh, he's probably a good athlete. And you're right. I was. I was. I had three interceptions in one game. I don't have time to go into all my stats. But I played at a local high school here, San Pasqual High School in Escondido, and uh, I'll never forget this. We were playing the football game, and we were playing our rivals, Tory Pines. It's the rich kids, it's the Cobra Kai's, it's somebody cheered. This is, you're not gonna like this joke. It's the bullies, they're the rich kids, and we're sitting there, and we're playing the game, and they always whooped up on us, always, until my senior year, we finally beating them, and we beat them 44 to 14. We're feeling good. We're having a good time. And then their crowd started chanting, that's all right. That's okay. You're going to work for us someday. <laughs> and we were all like, oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> and I forgot about the story until I was talking to my buddy, Mike. And my, 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 he's like, you remember that story? I go, yeah. He goes, you're never going to believe it. I go, what's up? He goes, I work for a guy from Torrey Pines. <laughs> 
was like, oh man, they still won. They still beat us. They still beat us. I, uh, I love edibles. You gotta be careful though when you do edibles, you can't eat too much. You know how edibles work. You don't feel it and then it goes to, I don't feel my legs. Like that's... One time I went to a concert with my ex and we're sitting there and then she took an edible and then she took one more. And I was like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. And it was a Tom Petty concert. We're having a good time. And all of a sudden I look over and she is staring. She pulled her hoodie all the way down and she's staring at a hole this big, <laughs> freaking out. And she's like, we gotta go. I'm like, no way, this is Tom Petty. Like, we're not going anywhere. She's like, I can't handle this, we gotta go. So we had to leave three songs into Tom Petty. Yeah, and then he died a week later. But, um, spoiler alert, yeah. But then we got to the Uber, and then that's when it hit me, because we're in the Uber, and she looks at me, she goes, who's this guy driving us home? And I look at her, and I go, I have no idea. And we got paranoid, because we're like, we didn't want him to know, to know where we lived. He's the only one that knew where we lived. We had no idea. So we both panicked. We, go, we had him drop us a mile away from the house, because we didn't want the only person that knew where we lived to know where we lived. I'm going to tell a couple more jokes, and then uh, we'll, we'll get out of here. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. We've had some fun. Let's, let's do something not so controversial. Let's, uh, I'm going to talk about gun control. <laughs> gun control is crazy because you don't know it's a big deal, and then you get on social media, and you're like, oh, my God, this is insane. Because half the people are like, everyone should have guns. And the other half's like, nobody should have guns. And you're like, I don't know the answer. I just think maybe we need to keep guns out of stupid people's hands. Like, that's the goal. And I know it's harder than, than it is done. But I have three rules that would basically solve all our problems. And I'm pretty sure they're going to listen to me one day. Three simple run, uh, rules for gun control. Rule one is your background check. All they do is they check your social media for the last 10 years. They take a look at what you posted. They see how you've, like, if you posted dumb stuff, like, you can't have a gun. Like, no way. They see how you handled a breakup. If you didn't handle a breakup right, like you don't get a gun. If you've ever written poetry on Facebook, you can't have a gun. Absolutely not. What are you doing? And if you've done a haiku poem, you're in jail. What are, like, why? Why do we even learn that? What? Rule two, not as popular, but it's very important. If you're in your 20s, you can't have a gun. And that's because, you know, if you went to war, you get a gun. But if, you, if you're in your 20s, you can't have a gun. And that's because in your 20s, you're too emotional. You care too much. And I also draw from when I was in my 20s. When I was in my 20s, uh, somebody dared me to beer bong five beers at one time. And I did it. And then I puked. And uh, that's the guy you think should have a gun? Like, absolutely not. The last rule, and it's, um, it's the, the most important, is if you're passionate about anything, you can't have a gun. Like, if you care too much, like, if you've ever owned a bumper sticker, like, you can't have a gun. Absolutely not. No way. That's insane. <laughs> I love it. My parents are here tonight. I love my parents. They're the best. Um, yeah. My parents, uh, they support my comedy. They're, they're, very, they're very supportive of it. In fact, my mom actually told me the other day that Zoltan is her favorite comic, which is great. <laughs> She goes, Zoltan's my favorite comic. I'm like, yeah, but besides me, right? She's like, no, he's my favorite. And I'm like, you can't say that. Like, that's like picking, your, uh, picking a favorite son. She's like, yeah, your brother's my favorite son. I'm like, this is G, man, you're a G. But my parents, they embarrass me uh, because it's just, that's the way it is. Like, my friends can't do anything to embarrass me, but my parents embarrass me. And it started when I was in high school. My dad used to drive. My brother and I to school every single day in high school. I was a sophomore, he was a freshman. And he'd drive us every day and we'd get out of the car and he would honk the horn for a minute straight. And we'd walk away just terrified. And then every day he would get out of the car in his pajamas and he'd be like, hey boys, you forgot your lunch. We never forgot our lunch. This was a fake lunch sack that he had 
just to mess with us every single day. And as you, as you get older, you're like, oh man, like, oh, it'll be better, I won't be embarrassed. And I realize I'm never gonna get over being embarrassed by them. Like my mom's one of these moms who doesn't take pictures with a phone or a camera, she takes pictures with her iPad. I don't know if you've seen these ladies. Every picture, she just looks like this. She's like, I need another one. You're like, put it away, Kathy. No, you don't, we're done, we're done. One time I brought a lady over uh, to meet my parents for the first time and we're at dinner and it's going great. And then my dad looks at her and he goes, hey Katie, we're so glad that you came. I was like, all right, everything's good so far. And he looks at her, yeah, it's nice that Josh brought a girl over because normally he brings dudes, so. I was like, that's never happened. And then my brother started chiming in. Yeah, like one time he brought this guy named Steve. We didn't like him as much as Mitch. I was like, that's, I'm driving home. I got to explain to her. No, none of that's true, I swear. My dad, he likes to pack a cooler everywhere he goes. <laughs> Sounds normal. But you're like, yeah, if you're going to a house party. But now my dad, one time I was like, you can't pack a cooler, we can't tailgate here. He goes, why? I go, it's Costco, dad. <laughs> can't tailgate at Costco. And he goes, why? Your mom's gonna be in there shopping for hours. Like, let's drink some beers. I was like, that's a very valid point. That's a very valid point, very smart. And he was right, we had like four or five dads join us, which was great. He goes, go get the hot dogs, let's make it official. We had a driver, my mom had to drive us, it was great. The biggest way my parents embarrass me is uh, the way they dance. It's the way they dance, it's, it's so embarrassing. They do it at every wedding they ever go to, they have one move, it's called the bump, where they just hip check each other. They do this for like 10 minutes of a song, they just hip check each other. And then they find us kids in the crowd. They go, oh, the kids are right there. The kids are right there. The kids are right there. And we just hide in shame. Like, oh my God. It's so embarrassing. And then I finally realized as I'm getting older, I realize why they do this. They do this to pay us back for the stuff we put them through. And if you're a parent, you've earned that right. Keep doing that to your kids. And then I, yeah, keep doing yeah. And then I thought about it, like, I can't wait to do that to my kids when we have kids, but it's gonna be way worse because the music we listen to and how we dance, you're gonna be at a wedding with your wife just like grinding away, just grinding away. Where are the kids? Kids are right there, honey. They're right there. Your wife's gonna be twerking like Miley Cyrus. It's gonna be. <laughs> this will be uh, my last joke. So. This album, uh, I'm calling this album Living the Dream, this special Living the Dream, and it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm dedicating it to my brother. My brother passed away this year, so I'm dedicating it to him. And uh, one of the things he used to always say was living the dream. It was one of his quotes, like he'd be at a coffee shop, living the dream, living the dream. And the reason I would, I would joke with him a little bit, I'd be like, dude, you're just getting coffee, bro. But he was always so happy. And one time he was at the Laker game. He's like, living the dream. And I called him, I'm like, bro, are you really? Like, you're in the nosebleeds, dude. Like, what are you, like, why are you not, why aren't you courtside in your dream? What are you doing, dude? I go, in my dream, I'm playing for the Lakers. Like, what are you doing? Like, get better dreams, dude. But then I thought about it, like living the dream, and he always loved comedy, and this is a dream to be able to do this and do a special. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really love you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. All right. I love you guys. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do a couple more stories uh, just as a tribute to him because uh, I don't know when I'll ever get to do these. There we go, I don't want to fucking be emotional. <clears throat> All right, so some of you guys are here because you knew my brother tonight and he was amazing. And one of the things my brother would always do, he was a big supporter of my comedy shows and he would come to the shows. And one of the things I loved about him is he would call me and he'd be like, hey man, can I come to your show? I was like, yeah, please do. And he'd be like, is it all right if I bring 14 people? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dude, that's like half the audience. Yeah, please bring 14 people. And one of the last times uh, he came out to Vegas and we were hanging out in the green room. And uh, we were with my buddy, we're hanging out, and we, I was there for a week in Las Vegas. He came out for three of the days to come see my shows. And he was in the green room with all the comics the whole time. And I was like, hey man, I'm so glad you came out. But for some reason, I noticed you didn't watch one of my sets for three days, dude. 
And his answer is like, man, I can see you all the time. I'm hanging out with all these real comedians. I was like, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I got two more little stories. One time, he was like my travel buddy. We'd go to Europe. Uh, he would just go to Europe whenever he was a yes guy. And one time we were in Europe with our parents and it was when they had like the TomTom Tom GPSs. And Kurt and I found out that you could change the, the directions to your own voice. <laughs> and my dad was driving and we thought it would be funny to change the left turn to whoa, 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 wrong way, bud. <laughs> and then... One time, uh, my dad went to turn left, and instead of she going, turn left, she goes, whoa, 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 and my dad goes like this. We almost get an accident, it almost kills us all. We're like, oh my God, dude, what are we doing? And I got tons of stories, like about, I can't talk about Lake Como, I can't talk about the red light district, I can't talk about Ibiza, so I'm not gonna talk about those. The last story is one of my favorites. We were uh, in our 20s, and we went on a cruise, and we were kind of, cheap and broke and we were like how do we sneak alcohol on so what we did we put it in shampoo bottles which is a great idea if you get all the soap out we didn't so we had captain morgan and shampoo bottles and like for the first three days of the cruise we're just drinking soap we're like feeling sick we're like what is going on and my brother's drinking all his own stuff. And we're like, what's up? He goes, why don't you guys just do what I did? And we're like, what? He goes, I wrapped all my booze. I put two grandma from Kurt. Yeah, you guys, not, oh, he put booze bottles in gifts. Because he wrapped them to grandma, they didn't open them up and take them. So the whole trip, he was just drinking booze while we were drinking soap. I don't know if that'll, that'll make the album or anything, but it's something I really wanted to do, and I appreciate a lot of you guys coming out. Uh, you guys don't know, how, this isn't lost on me to, that you guys all showed up. I got a bunch of family here, I got a bunch of friends. Like, this is amazing that you came out. Uh, I hope it was good, I hope you guys liked it. I wanna bring up F Phil and Chris, please, real quick. I also wanna thank Zeke. Uh, make some noise for Zeke, he's the one filming the show. And Phil, and uh, these guys are good buddies of mine. We started a company called BB Backyard Comedy. They kind of talked me into doing this special, and I love you guys both. And so thank you so much. I really do. I appreciate you guys. And I really appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much for coming out. Thank you so much. <laughs>